Insects are becoming a trend. The Western diet has to kind of shift and change. And most importantly, it's natural, it's normal, and it's the way that we have to feed the future. We're facing big global challenges. People don't believe that they can make a change, but you really, really can, because you making a change is the only change you can really make. When it times is by nine billion people, it makes a fundamental difference to the way that we live on this planet. Everywhere you look these days, it feels as though some sinister organization is trying to trick you into eating bugs. It feels like a schoolyard prank we might have pulled in our younger years, but now the government and the globalists, they're the ones pranking us. For example, here's the World Economic Forum. Five reasons why eating insects could reduce climate change. Our consumption of animal protein is the source of greenhouse gas and climate change. Insects are an overlooked source of protein and a way to battle climate change. The consumption of insects can offset climate change in many ways. We've been conditioned to think of animals and plants as our primary sources of proteins, namely meat, dairy and eggs or tofu, beans and nuts. But there's an unsung category of sustainable and nutritious protein that has yet to widely catch on. Insects. Before you say yuck, hear us out. You know what? Hard no. Do you think that Klaus Schwab, the Bond villain head of the World Economic Forum, is eating bugs or is he laughing while others do? But wait, there's more from these people. Why we need to give insects the role they deserve in our food systems. You guys, the crickets are working so hard, they deserve it. Well, well, I, I, oh. uh -huh. Could insect farms meet our food demands of the future? And here is the Canadian government funding a cricket farm in London, Ontario, the world's largest facility of its kind. They see the farm is making cricket protein powder for pet food, but that's not the long-term goal here. Human pet food is the real plan and they actually admit it. Look at this. Crickets have this incredible ability to convert what they eat into protein biomass, said Mohamed Ashour, co-founder of Aspire Food Group, who for the last six years has operated a research and development facility in Austin, Texas. Okay, let's just stop right here for a minute because ruminants, like cattle, they do the exact same thing. They take plants and cellulose, you know, the things that we humans have difficulty digesting, and they turn it into protein and fat and DHA and B12. They're amazing. Beef is a superfood. Anyway, let's get back to these bug merchants. We have a massive growth in both population and appetite for protein while at the same time we're seeing a significant reduction in arable land and resources to produce food. Our long-term vision is to make sure that this is a protein source that can be available and affordable to genuinely address food insecurity in many countries around the world, he said. And you paid your future cricket meal overlords $8.5 million to scale up that bug ranch, by the way, so I, I don't know, eat up, friends. At the same time around the world, we are seeing attacks on meat farmers. Canada just backed off of a plan to label ground meat as bad for your health after a huge pushback from industry and consumers, thank goodness. And farmers are protesting right now in the Netherlands after the government told them they basically have to cull 30% of their livestock to meet carbon emissions goals. It's a bizarre scheme that will drive up the price of real meat, leaving it out of the price range for normal Dutch people. But that's okay because while the rich elites eat the steak only they can afford, Dutch people feeling the crunch of grocery store prices can just eat crickets like they're labradoodles. Now here's one thing these anti-nutritional cricket pusher globalists don't want you to know. Insects are dangerous to eat, not just to the people weird enough to consume them. I knew when you said trendy protein bars there was something that made it trendy. But to the unwitting farmers that exist near the cricket ranches. This is from the National Library of Medicine in 2019. Bear with me. Will you indulge me as I read this because you're not going to see this anytime somebody else tells you it's your civic duty to malnourish yourself, eat bugs, live in a pod and self-sterilize. A parasitological evaluation of edible insects 
and their role in the transmission of parasitic diseases to humans and animals. From January 1st, 2018 came into force Regulation EU 2015 2238 of the European Parliament and of the Council of 25 November 2015 introducing the concept of novel foods sounds sinister including insects and their parts one of the most commonly used species of insects are mealworms house crickets cockroaches and migratory locusts in this context the unfathomable issue is the role of edible insects in transmitting parasitic diseases that can cause significant losses in their breeding and may pose a threat to humans and animals. The aim of this study was to identify and evaluate the developmental forms of parasites colonizing edible insects in household farms and pet stores in Central Europe and to determine the potential risk of parasitic infections for humans and animals. The experimental material compromised samples of live insects from 300 household farms and pet stores including 75 mealworm farms my skin is just crawling 75 house cricket farms 75 Madagascar hissing cockroach farms and 75 migrating locust farms parasites were detected in 244 or 81.33 percent out of 300 examined insect farms in 206, so nearly 69% of the cases, the identified parasites were pathogenic for insects only. In 106, or 35.33% of cases, parasites were potentially parasitic for animals. And in 91, or 30.33% of cases, parasites were potentially pathogenic for humans. Edible insects are an underestimated reservoir of human and animal parasites. Our research indicates the important role of these insects in the epidemiology of parasites pathogenic to vertebrates. Conducted parasitological examination suggests that edible insects may be the most important parasite vector for domestic insectorivous animals. According to our studies, the future research should focus on the need for constant monitoring of studied insect farms for pathogens, thus increasing food and feed safety. So I guess if you eat bugs, you could get bugs as parasites. Now you have a little more information, so you can decide, is field to plate worth the hate, or are you going to eat your bugs and take your drugs? For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Regular viewers of Rebel News know that I'm a bit of a meat evangelist. I'm a proud supporter of the Canadian beef industry and Canadian beef farmers. If you want to show your beef patriotism, well, I've got a great way for you to do that. You can head on over to rebelnewsstore.com where we've got a great new selection of pro-beef merchandise. Again, that's rebelnewsstore.com.